Hello everyone, this is Ben Miller of SniffWiFi.com. Welcome to my little online 10 talk about surveying with outside survey software. To give you all a little bit of a background about what I'm doing here at the 2018 Wireless LAN Professionals Conference or WLPC, I was scheduled to give a 10 minute talk about site surveying for Wi Fi without using site survey software. And I kind of made a little change at the last minute and addressed a different topic at the conference. And it was uh, pointed out to me after the conference that some folks were looking forward to me talking about this subject. So what I'm going to do is take 10 minutes here and discuss site surveying without site survey software uh, to uh, kind of make up for that a little bit. Um, if, and uh, you can see my contact info there at the bottom of the presentation. Uh, so yeah, he, so here's the basic presentation I was going to go through. Um, if, if you need to do a site survey, whether it be on the pre-installation side of things, which I will refer to as design, or whether it needs to be on the post-installation side of things, which I'll refer to as validation, uh, it, it's something that can be done uh, without the need for expensive site survey software. Um, and it, it's not just like a, it can be done, but you're going to be doing a lot of sacrificing. It's, it's something that honestly can be done while still maintaining a, a really, really high quality uh, wireless LAN installation. Uh, when it comes to the pre-installation side of site surveying, a lot of the steps of site surveying stay the same whether you're going to use site survey software or not. Um, you're still going to need to know the requirements for the installation. You're still going to want to know about the building materials. Uh, but I would say the big thing uh, that I do when site surveying without using site survey software uh, is I really try to focus on RF propagation, radio frequency propagation. So what I mean there is I'll go to a site and I'll mount temporary access points and it kind of mentions on here I'll try to use a production access point if at all possible um, and I'll, I'll walk to various areas of the site just to try to get an idea of how radio frequency is propagating through that site uh, the goal isn't necessarily to walk everywhere I kind of mentioned here that I'm, I'm really only walking select locations the goal is just to get an idea of how radio frequency is going to propagate. Um, and to give you an example there, I have this little diagram. This is kind of an approximate diagram of an open office space that, that I did uh, surveying for. Uh, it, it was actually part of a multi-floor office deployment. You can see there the stairwell in the upper right uh, that's kind of indicated there. So it's this big open space. Uh, there's the kind of elevator areas here. The area between the elevators, you kind of come up the stairs and you can either walk into the office space one way, walk in, walk out the other way, or you can come up the elevators, uh, walk walk into the open space. And, and this is kind of what the office looked like. Um, and so for this project, for the pre-installation part of things, for the design part of things, the goal was just to choose access point locations. I'll use little purple dots here to indicate and try to get an idea of how well uh, Wi-Fi propagates. So for example, if I want to get an idea of how well Wi-Fi propagates just through open space, I might mount an access point in a given location and use some type of production device, use, use some type of real device. For this particular survey, I was using a one by one uh, smartphone, a, a one stream smartphone, a non MIMO smartphone, if you want to call it that. And I was just trying to get an idea of, of kind of what boundaries could I expect? What's, what's a boundary for really strong performance? Uh, what's a boundary for what I might call adequate performance? And what's a boundary where uh, I might get some degree of interference from the access point? And, and the idea is that I'm going to try to do this going through kind of an open area I'm going to try to do this when it comes to signal that might have to go through elevator walls. I'm going to try to do this 
uh, through other types of walls. There, there was a kind of wall structure separating the back office areas. We were told not to install access points in the back office areas, but we still wanted to get those back office areas covered. So we had to choose access point locations that would allow us to cover those back office areas. Uh, the bathrooms had to be covered. Uh, so we had to make the choice whether to mount access points outside of the bathroom areas or inside of the bathroom areas. Um, and again, the idea is I want to get an idea of how well radio frequency will propagate through these bathroom walls. How well, uh, honestly, even just through bathroom stalls was something that uh, we, we had to be concerned about there. I just want to get an idea of how well Wi-Fi is going to propagate so that I can <clears throat> excuse me, make choices on my access point locations. Um, and, and then there's some other things to consider when it comes to the design phase. Uh, for, for example, I, I, I generally like to sort of uh, uh, think about where users are going to go. You know, if you, uh, if I, whoops, if I go back to uh, kind of the previous page with my little bullet points on here, my last bullet point is always kind of think about the user um, and, and so just to give you an example of what I'm talking about with where users are going to go for this particular project, I, I really tried to avoid choosing access point locations uh, that were by these corners because I knew that if I placed an access point by one of these corners, there was an excellent chance it might cover two disparate areas that really might not have the ability to hear each other. I knew there may be a user over here connected to an access point over here another user in another area of office connected to the same AP, but these devices may not be able to hear each other. For those of, the, who, of you who have been in Wi-Fi for a long time, that's what we call a hidden node situation where two or more devices on the same access point can't really hear each other. And so I tried to avoid these corner areas to avoid hidden nodes. Another thing I did in this office is I tried to place access points on the edge of the office because there was a lot of Wi-Fi coming from outside the office. I knew that I wanted to have a very, very strong signal for the people that were at desks near the window. I didn't want someone at a desk uh, that was near the window to have to be connecting from uh, to an access point that was far away from the window. I, I knew that the combination of this sort of noise or this interference coming from outside of the building and an AP that was a little bit further away trying to reach that user, I knew that might be a problem. So those are, the, those are kind of the things I, I try to do if it comes to a pre-install survey. Um, and then when it comes to post-install, when it comes to validation, the key thing here, man, I mean, it's just a, a really simple thing. Just I try to keep it real. I want to use a real device. I want to use the device in that way that's like a user would be using that device. So if it's, you know, a case where I have to support iPhones, I want to use that iPhone uh, upright. I want to lay that iPhone on the desk. I want to hold that iPhone perhaps in landscape mode. Uh, I might want to keep that iPhone in my pocket. Uh, try to try to see if a call, you know, for example, uh, might stay up while the iPhone's in my pocket. Uh, I, I want to try to use the devices in as real a way as possible. And, you know, the, the key thing about that is sometimes when I mention that to people, well, you want to use real devices, you want to use them as much as possible. A big thing that comes up to me is the issue of time. Like, how are you going to have time to do all that stuff if you're go into a given area and you're having the phone laid on the desk, having it in portrait mode, having it in landscape mode, having it in your hand and, and doing all these things with it. And, and so that's why I always encourage people for the validation. You don't have to walk every single square foot of the facility for a validation survey. I, and I, I realize that for sort of the documentation aspect of a validation survey, you might need to walk the entire area you know, to kind of create a, a, you know, for for lack of a better term, kind of the green blob. If, if you want to kind of create that green blob over a floor plan as part of a site survey report, I get that for the documentation you need to walk the different areas. But in terms of truly validating that the Wi-Fi is working, 
I would not necessarily say that you need to walk every square foot of an area. You just want to look for those trouble spots. You want to say, you know, here's an area that might have a lot of users, or here's an area where there might be some movement. Here's areas that are further from APs if you have those types of areas. Another one that I kind of forgot to mention but should have mentioned in these bullet points is if you have areas near reflective surfaces, reflection is a real thing. It can cause real problems in Wi-Fi. So going near those reflective surfaces, that's that's a, a big thing uh, that I like to do there. And then last little point there it mentions, make sure you have that 6 megabit per second rate set to mandatory while you're doing a validation survey. And, and that actually applies whether you're using site survey software or whether you're not using site survey software. Uh, last little thing before I uh, kind of wrap up this 10 talk here. Whoops, that's the wrong page. This is the page I'm looking for. Uh, the last little thing I wanted to mention are just some free utilities that allow you to read the information that you need for a validation survey. For a validation survey, I want to know what my BSS ID is, meaning the access point that I am currently connected to. And I want to know the signal strength that I'm getting from that access point as well as from other access points. And for, you know, depending on which operating system you're using, there's going to be a free scanner option available. You can see there I have the list of operating systems, um, you know, and, and all of those are free applications. All of those applications will show you your BSS ID and will show you the RSSI that you're receiving from access points. The, the one little caveat there is if you're surveying with iPhones or with iPads, you do need two applications. You need Net Analyzer and Airport Utility. Airport Utility is used to show you the signal strength, the RSSI. Net Analyzer is to show you which access point you are currently connected to. For Apple iOS, there's not a single application that shows you both of those things. Uh, so hopefully this was uh, informative for you all on, on how I do surveying. Uh, while uh, while not using kind of traditional site survey software. And, you know, I, I'm a big believer and I'm a big believer in kind of using real devices whenever possible, measuring radio frequency propagation with real devices. If you're doing a design, measuring signal strength with real devices, if you're doing a uh, validation. And so uh, it, it is something that I endorse. Thank you for watching the video and uh, enjoy the Sniff Wi-Fi blog.